I call the meeting of the May 3rd, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. And would everybody please join me in a pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clark, could you please take a roll call? Okay. Verhey. Here. Monaco. Here. Hornset. Staggs. Here. Charbonneau. Here. And Chair Sullivan. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Uh, now we'll move on to citizens' comments. Uh, we have citizens' comments on any subject except those of scheduled for public hearing. Those who have signed in will be given the first opportunity to speak, and the time is limited to three minutes, and we have a total of 36 minutes for the for the agenda item. Uh, Mr. Clerk, is there anybody signed in? There is one, Carol Griswold. My name is Carol Griswold and I live in the city limits. I would like to speak to Resolution 2022-012, Development Requirements for Table Notes, Letter E. A change to the zoning code, is, code especially one of this magnitude, <coughs> should include more public input than a three-minute comment ahead of an already packed agenda. Zoning code changes should be well advertised and discussed in a public work session. There was no discussion in the resolution of the effect of reducing the required lot size for multifamily developments of five or more units. There would be even less space for on-site snow disposal, screened dumpsters, parking for vehicles, RVs and boats, etc., landscaping, or a yard for the kids and dogs to play in. How does this reduced lot size not degrade the quality of life for the residents and the community? The city recently increased housing density by allowing studio apartments and expanded seasonal employee housing. The city changed code to allow the Alaska Sea Life Center to house volunteers in RVs in their parking lot in CBD. The city authorized a master plan for extending utilities to undeveloped properties and created a developer reimbursement program. Multifamily residential property on Phoenix is being developed at an accelerated rate. PSD <coughs> recently approved a CUP for a fourplex there to further increase density. Other code changes regarding short-term rentals need to be discussed. There are better ways for the city to be part of the solution for housing issues. This is not one of them. Please vote no to this resolution and schedule a work session on potential zoning, change, zoning code changes for further discussion. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Is there anybody else signed in? That's all. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to speak? Okay. Okay. All right, if there is none, then I'll move on to the approval of the agenda, the consent agenda. Uh, I will need a motion and a second. I'd like a motion to approve the agenda and consent agenda. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Are there any changes to the agenda? Mm. Okay. Mr. Clerk, can we have a roll call on the agenda, please? Okay, Charbonneau? Yes. Verhey? Yes. Hornset? Blank. Monaco? Yes. Staggs? Yes. And Acting Chair Sullivan? Yes. Okay, we'll okay. move on to the next one. It's a special order. Oh, hang on just a second. I'll let me tell you. Oh. <clears throat> Tonight's agenda and consent agenda are approved. And approved on the consent agenda are the April 5th, 2022 <coughs> regular meeting minutes. Okay, thank you. I was moving too fast. Okay. <laughs> Next we have special orders, presentations, and reports. Uh, we don't have any proclamations and awards this time. Uh, next is the city administration report, and I'll turn it over to community development director, Jason Pickley. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of make a, um, a few additional notes. Uh, on top of kind of normal business of what we've been working on. And uh, we will be meeting with um, uh, the borough representatives next week, just in regards to housing issues and lands and outside of city limits. 
uh, just so we can, although it's outside of city limits, uh, we wanted to make sure we're still addressing those possibilities out there and working with the borough on, on that front. And um, uh, we are working on continuing to dig into data for the short-term rental um, discussions, which is a lot of digging, but it's uh, we're all working on that. And uh, we did finish the, the kind of the, the revamp of the Muni land plan, and we are prepping that for a work session in June. And then kind of the other big piece that we're working on now is the overall uh, GIS update uh, for the whole city and bringing all the departments onto kind of the GIS uh, program so that way they can work more efficiently. And, and um, hopefully at some point in time we'll have some public pieces to that as well so that the public can get online and be able to look at certain things and find useful information. So. So it'll be, I'm sorry if they, they haven't finished, I was just going to wonder if they had any, or will it be overlay, electrical overlays, uh, you know, utility overlays and the rest that people will be able to pull up and take a look for it? Yeah, and even like public documents for properties and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's the kind of heavy lifting we're doing is getting all of the archive documents together and, and then Selena's working on kind of the GIS mapping piece. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, anything else? Courtney, have anything? No. All righty. Well, we don't have any other reports or presentations. Uh, then we'll move on to the public hearings. Um, the first public, the first item for public hearing is Resolution 22, uh, 2022 Mr. Clerk, could you read this, the title of this, and continue the record? Okay. Resolution 2022-09. A resolution of the Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Seward, Alaska, recommending City Council and Kenai Peninsula Borough approval of the preliminary replat of Fort Raymond subdivision, replat number one, lot 12A, located at 911 Hemlock Avenue, creating Hemlock subdivision, lots one through 40, and tract A. Okay, thank you. I'll need a motion on the second, please. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022-09. I'll go ahead and second that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, administration, do you have any comments regarding this? Yes, yeah, so uh, as you know, with this resolution, the city has been working with RM Consults Incorporated to create a design for the next sub subdivision, as well as <coughs> a, a plan for expanding city water and sewer infrastructure to this proposed subdivision. These two resolutions were passed in by City Council back in December and then in February. The preliminary lead plat that you have before you tonight just shows conceptual designs of how this lot would be subdivided, and this is the very first stage of um, a replat, the replatting process. It would still need to go before City Council and then the borough, at which time the applicant would then need to make the revisions to the plat that had been requested either by Planning and Zoning, City Council, or the Borough, and then bring forward a <coughs> final replat. The city's still waiting on uh, some geotech work to be done, and that can alter some of the designs that you see. The 40 lots are the maximum that this property uh, will hold, but potentially would not would not have 40 lots once we get the geotech back and, and other input from the borough. The, the application shows or details how utilities will brought will be brought to these properties. And on the way down <coughs> for tonight's meeting, it shows the park space to the west of Four Acres Campground, as well as the bike park to the south will not be altered or, or touched in this uh, replat of this, of this property. They, they would be their own property separate of the one to, f one to 40 lots for housing. Staff comments. Building department had no comment. Fire department stated that hydrants would need to be installed for the code. Public works had no comment. Harbor, no comment. Police, no comment. Electric Department, no comment. The staff recommendation is that the Commission approves Resolution 2022-009, recommending City Council and Kenai Peninsula Borough approval of the preliminary replat of Fort Raymond subdivision, 
Street flat number 1, lot 12A, located at 911 Hemlock Avenue, creating Hemlock Subdivision, lots 1 through 40, and track day. Uh, commissioners, do you have uh, any questions for administration? No, I'm good at that. Anybody else? Uh, my question is, is if we're going to have 40 lots, that would mean 80 parking spaces plus the houses and then a yard. I'm still having trouble wrapping my mind around it. And I walked it and looked at it, and I was like, I just can't really see it happening. I'm not sure that it's quite ready for 40 lots of any. Well, the, the engineers actually do, when they when they designed it, it's for 6,000 square foot lots, which includes parking, and they have that kind of built into those lot sizes. So, the engineer for that. So then, um, which I, I've not had the opportunity or taken the time to get through and go through the code enough to see, but I know where I come from, you've got to be quite a ways off of the property lines before you can build a house. Um, so the setback, I think, was like 20 feet. So that puts each house at 40 foot apart. So, and I know our codes are a little bit different here. I, I just haven't got that deep into them yet. I'm still learning. Um, I apologize, guys. I'm relatively new at this here, um, but I just don't really. I, I'm not quite wrapping my head around that one yet. On how we can do it? Yeah, I know that, it, that they're coming up saying we can. Yeah, I mean, all of it is like they look at our code and they're very familiar with our code because we use it for lots of things. And so those are so that's 1,500 square foot houses. Yeah, but I mean, because but that doesn't have to be a fifteen hundred square foot footprint, and so you can get all the setbacks into there. Okay, so what is our what was the lot lines and the uh, area for each lot? Six thousand. Six thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. And that's at the maximum. So you have your lots at the smallest. We do realize that there's probably going to be some shrinkage, which would then probably increase your lot size. But that's kind of like we're pushing up against the bounds. Mm -hmm. um, just as more of like a proof of concept. Okay. But yeah, it, it, it's all means are. There's no code violation in there. Okay. Anything else? That's that's all I have for this okay. moment. Um, anybody else? Have I have uh, just a couple of questions, uh, Director. The the you have this as a preliminary replat. What can we expect from the preliminary versus the final replat on that? Yeah, so so what happens with that is um, they did do the geotech, they did board, you know, the drilling, all that type of thing, and they said. Um, they reported back to us with preliminary, and they said there's nothing that's going to be like this. It's going to shut it down type of changes. Um, uh, when they do finalize the reports, we expect that we'll have to do some mitigation because it's sewer and all ground has to be mitigated in some way, shape, or form, um, which they acknowledge. And so we, we, we know that there's going to be um, drainage that we'll have to account for. Um, certain areas will need to bring in some fill. And, and those types of things. And so we, we figure with, with, with those, we, prob we will probably lose some um, some of the lots in that, just to accommodate some of those things. But also too, we want to, as we increase the number of lots, what that does is it spreads the cost of utilities over more lots, which then decreases the prices of the homes. And so it is kind of a fine balance of, um, we want there to be, we want there, it to be a nice neighborhood, but also I mean, we kind of want to make it affordable too. And so that, you know, it's that balance of like we need to. The more you can get in there, the lower it kind of distributes that price for utilities per house. Okay, because that was like that brought me to my next one that they were being looking at because that is somewhat in a flooded area. Because you know the bike park itself gets pretty pretty flooded as well. Mm -hmm. From what I've seen walking through there, my other concern is just the traffic and the houses up against the, the Seward Highway a little bit. That mm -hmm. you know the forty of those made it a little bit. Um, seen one like a lot. But two, I was concerned about, um, you know, is there an ability to readjust that preliminary um, mm -hmm. schematic so they can adjust per direction from us and the council? Is that? Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of normal procedure, what, what takes place um, when once you approve a preliminary plat, and there's a lot, a lot of times changes that come up. And the traffic thing uh, along the highway, just to answer your question, that has been discussed. Um, that is a 35 mile an hour zone. Um, and so it, it's not like, um, so it is kind of a slower speed zone area in there. And, um, you know, and, and it's just kind of, we, for us in Seward, I think it feels very weird to have a, a houses right along the road, but for a lot of places, it's not uncommon whatsoever. I mean, you're looking at Anchorage. And so, um, yeah, there is some things I think that are a little bit, um, 
we're not used to having some of that, and we do realize that there is there did there does need to be some setback in there, mm -hmm. like for drainage, maybe a vegetative buffer, um, those types of things would probably be good in there. Okay, thank you. Um, just a couple more things is uh, I know that there's other lands available that are privately owned. I'm assuming that they aren't coming available, so that is what's prompted the city to try to address some of the housing issues because that's the problems you know with everybody. So they're taking the initiative. I guess is what the Thing we have here, they have a piece of land that they'll try to go and try to at least solve, begin to solve that, that concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we do feel like this this land being walking distance from schools, we don't have a lot of that available. And so yeah. that is kind of a big, we're looking at neighborhoods having things that are walking distance from schools. Okay. And I guess my other questions as I've been going through this, if you put some of these homes, whether it's up to 40 or how many that goes in there, would that far exceed what you, the revenue that you would get, you know, the taxes on that versus the camping? I don't know what the camping revenue is. Yeah, I believe the camping revenue annually is about $80,000. Okay. But we feel like, if you look at, there's $80,000 in, in revenue, but then if you have sales tax for, let's say, 30 to 40 families, but also too, what else does that does in the overflow when we can have more families and more teachers? And, I mean, it's not just this one, straight dollar, but you're looking at kind of all the other things that happen when you do have more families there. Yeah, and that, that transitions to my next one is the, um, based on all the input that we've had, um, <coughs> so many people from the school system and the borough said, indicating that they had full support of this project to go forward. So that's, uh, you know, that's sort of nice as well as the Sea Life Center, because they're looking for folks as well. Mm -hmm. um, what I'd, I'd like to open it to the floor, if anybody has signed in for, uh, to speak on this. There are um, seven people on the list. First one, Ron Newcomb. For all the necessity to get arranged, but uh, I'm old and I'm tired, and you are all so young and enthusiastic. <laughs> and I really regret uh, having no choice but to, first of all, immediately violate the promise I made my wife, which was I was going to limit the foul language to as little as possible. I am going to be compelled to use the word bullshit. As Jermaine Greer stated to the Australian Supreme Court, there is no other word in the dialect for a specious argument, having all of the appearance of truth, and absolutely none of the substance. First of all, though, I would like to establish my credibility to speak to you. Um, the thing that's perhaps the most aggravating, I'm not aggravating, annoying, is the virtue signaling that is going on about our housing crisis and that darling teacher with a cat who couldn't find housing, not to mention our $100,000 a year school principal who also couldn't find housing. What a tragedy. Uh, I started up my life in Alaska in 1975 in Kodiak, uh, living in the morgue, uh, a uh, fisherman accountant was out fishing, so I got to stay in his place. And then I moved into my retired Navy secretary's uh, uh, trailer home, where I lived until the borough housing, which was provided by the school system, opened up for a social worker at the Division of Family and Youth Services to live, where <laughs> for the next seven years, along with commercial fishing, I uh, covered as far north as McGrath and villages outside of Nome and all across the Alaska Peninsula and much of South Central Alaska. I have not worked southeast, uh, nor a lot in Athabascan territory, but otherwise I've pretty much had contact with every indigenous group in Alaska. And I moved to Seward in 1989, and there were people in the room who could so better document and inform you about uh, the atrocities 
of public process that have gone on during my 32 years in Seward. Uh, I last got motivated to come here uh, when the fluoride debacle was ramrodded through in exactly the same process of when you make the declaration so that everything, the shit all kinds of comes down on the Tuesday after Memorial Day. So nobody really has a, an opportunity to figure out what is going on and how does this work and what they're really proposing. And they always have charming public presenters who give you what, again, I'm going to slip. Uh, my idea of this proposal, but I need to establish my credibility further. I live at 2407 Evergreen right here. When I first engaged with the city when I think 1995 and swore then, I would never do it again. But I think it was somewhere around 2012 or 13, I got a landscape architect to try to improve the visual quality of my home for my neighborhood. And uh, not only got no assistance from the city, got ridiculed in school. So I moved on. Uh, but then uh, in around about 2018, 2019, I guess, um, <coughs> The city finally got around to uh, doing something that was just more than human flesh could bear, but I bore it. And with all of that, my watch telling me that I'm going only one minute left, these are the points uh, in the document that I will chain myself to the tree or the caterpillar or whatever the hell we got to do. This is the most breathtaking week. I call it a contractor's wet dream drop into PowerPoint. And that is precisely what this is. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go immediately to uh, Jason pushing against the bounds of proof of concept. I've talked to Dave Hale trying to advance my project, Forest Acres Farm, sustainable food production, preservation of natural forest, endangered species, blah, blah, blah. Everything to which was 15 minutes remaining, I have to give enormous credit to Carol Griswold, David Paperman, and of all people, Rhonda Hubbard, who have participated in civil discourse for 32 years and been breathtakingly ignored by every city management. This is a travesty of the process. Thank you very much. I hope I wasn't too offensive. I try not to be, but I can be a hell of a lot more offensive, and I promise you, I will be. Thank you. Who do we have up next? Next is uh, Peggy, not sure how to pronounce Ventura. the last name. Peggy Ventura. I'm Peggy Ventura and have been part of this community for 27 years. I own property in town and live outside city limits currently. I can't begin to tell you all the reasons to keep Forest Acres Campground as it is. No replat, no rezoning. You have to understand how wonderful this area feels and understand the facts. There is a reason Central Park is in New York City and has been left as a natural park. In Seward, the only natural areas are privately owned or up in the mountains with the exception of Forest Acres Campground. From Two Lakes Trail to Lost Lake, both uphill areas, all public spaces are not wooded areas. There are many residents and visitors who don't drive that can walk around a campground as it's flat, peaceful, and full of noises and activities of nature. We know trees help with cleaning the air as well as absorbing the groundwater. These trees cannot be replaced if they are removed. I grew up in Anchorage and learned that my imagination had no limitations in exploring what's in the woods. I was comfortable and a part of them. While I was a National Park Ranger at Exit Glacier, I spoke with many people who were afraid of the woods. One day, a lady from a large city said she was afraid to go through the woods to see the glacier after traveling across the country to come see it. I asked if she'd trust me to lead her. She did, and we were both emotional when she had completed the hike. 
she said she didn't realize it was safe to walk in the woods, and it was a wonderful experience. I confessed, big cities were scary to me. We have a park that also brings in income, as campers in the summer pay for this experience. How fortunate that this area can be enjoyed by boaters who can leave a family to camp and walk to playgrounds and the bike park and basketball courts while they spend time on the water within five minutes of the campground. One day I saw a man lying on the ground in the bike park on a beautiful, warm, sunny day. I approached to see if he was okay and found he was sleeping. When I spoke, he awoke and said, I'm a guest at the military rec camp, a veteran, and it was so peaceful. I laid down and didn't even know I was tired, but I guess I fell asleep. Trees are homes for so many birds, bugs, and animals. The berries are ripe every fall. You would destroy that what many people enjoy, but also what the animals depend on to survive. This area cannot be restored as these are healthy old trees, an old forest. It's taken generations to grow what we have and we already have other areas in Seward that people have clear cut, filled with gravel and can be made into home sites. When we drive into Seward, it is feeling less like the community we used to love. There needs to be places Alaskans and visitors can come and enjoy a protected habitat that feels like Alaska, where they go home feeling less stressed because they saw a world in balance with nature and not just buildings, pavement, homes, and indoor recreation. This is a wonderful place to learn cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, play, and make snowmen in the winter, or just take a walk and maybe see a moose under a tree that has sought protection <coughs> from the wind. Yes, wind and sewer. If rezoned and cleared opportunities for children to Easter egg hunt, campfires, and making s'mores in the woods would be lost. There are groups that come and have a place where disabled people can enjoy an adventure, and this is a win for all. If you haven't heard the songs of the birds as you walk through the words, please do before you vote. We know the value of natural settings. Don't change our little city into an ugly scar where we have to drive miles to enjoy seeing moose, bear, ermine, coyotes, and squirrels, along with the birds, bees, flowers, and yes, the trees. As they have lived in or passed through this area virtually undisturbed for the most part since Seward was first established. I'm going to tell you now what the birds had to say a couple days ago. They were saying, keep the forest in Forest Acres. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clark, who do we have up next? Okay, next is Alan Haskins. Good evening. I'm Alan Haskins. I uh, live inside city limits on the Ash and uh, also the principal at the elementary school here. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about where I'm coming from uh, as far as the housing and if any of you would have been at the board meeting last night that went for five and a half hours and a lot of things that were talked about um, by the community members that were there was the lack of housing. Um, I know for my job and uh, my colleague that will be speaking in a little bit, um, finding adequate housing for employees is almost impossible. The last couple of years it's been getting worse and worse. Um, we have been offering teachers jobs, and these are these are high-paying jobs, and they get turned down because people go, we cannot. Oh, start the clock. You can take the minute off if you want. But we cannot find housing, and that's why they turn it down. They'd love to come to sewer, and I know the gentleman spoke earlier about you know we all have to do things. You know when you move to a community. I lived in Alaska for 15 years, and yeah, I started out in a place that two-bedroom apartment with three kids and you know you separate them one goes to the bathtub the other two go in their rooms all that kind of stuff and we we gotta do we gotta do but times are changing people don't want to do that um you know so 
Um, I thought my job was hard as a principal. You guys, this is a good one here. <laughs> but, it, you know, if, if uh, doing a good job at Forest Acres and making it a place that can be um, a place where people can live and feel like they are part of the community, um, I, I think it's a good plan. It's a good start. Um, there's a lot of other places that are going to need to be, um, you know, explored and uh, looked at to be able, because we're going to need more than, you know, they say 40 houses, but I, I, I venture to guess you, you're going to get upwards of 30 in there when it's all said and done, probably. Um, I've been around construction and planning a little bit. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, I, I think, you know, for the benefit of the community, I've been here five years and I've seen the elementary uh, school decline by 115 students. Um, I've had parents tell me this year already, we're moving away, we can't afford, we can't find housing. And these are, these are folks that have a family of three or four, and I ask them where they're going, and they're like, we're going to the Central Pen or we're going to Anchorage. So I mean, we, I love Seward. Seward's awesome. Would I like to keep it the same? Would I like it to you know, keep it this way you know, all the time? Yes. But if the school starts to decline, your community is going to decline. And once the school goes, a lot of things will go by the wayside. So I know you guys have a lot to think about and a lot of decisions. And I know the best thing that I've <clears throat> learned about Seward is everybody is passionate. Our board meeting last night, people were passionate. And passion is good. you know. And so hopefully you guys can take all of the information and come up with a sound decision. Thank you. Okay, next is Henry Burns. <coughs> well, um, I am that principal, makes over 100 grand, can't find a home. Um, my name is Dr. Burns, I'm the principal at Seward High School. Um, I know everybody's very emotional about uh, Forest Acres, okay? Um, and I understand Seward is a beautiful place. That's why I moved here. That's why I want to live here. That's why I got have, have a job here. Okay. Uh, my my main concern right now is finding people to work. Okay. Uh, right now we're looking at seven seven critical need positions in Seward. Um, that's sped special education, nurse, um, speech, psychologist. All these people I need to hire before next year, and I I, don't have, I can't. Uh, just last week I had a person I was I hired in Buffalo, New York, find a position because she can't find a place here um, to live. Okay, uh, as Mr. Askin was saying, that our enrollment goes down, consequently uh, the schools will have to cut teachers. Okay, in the last couple of years we've seen that already. Uh, we lost a. Um, a dandy of a teacher last year, Mr. Marshall. If you don't know, he's been in the community a long time. Uh, he retired, but I, I wanted to persuade him to teach a couple more years. Uh, something I looked at on the uh, <coughs> websites today, you're just in the city area of Seward, you have a VRBs. You have 143 VRBs available and 52 Airbnbs available. That's considerable in this little small space here at Seward. Um, and obviously, I was one of those people that were living in a long-term rental that got canceled, okay? Or that renewed or whatever you want to call it, okay? Um, but the thing that I guess you guys are missing is most rental properties are from May through September. So that means that there's no place where I call them school families uh, since school is still in session. And even in every of those families, we can move out of town every summer, okay? Consequently, I lost my secretary, and I lost an aide just because of that. I can't afford to live here. Uh, they make more money in the hospitality industry than they make uh, in the school system. Uh, if you guys go on the Seward Housing app on Facebook, uh, which I uh, was, <laughs> you get daily reminders of professionals try to move here and they can't find housing. That's just not hospitality. That's people that are working for the prison system. I got people in Coast Guard. You look on there, they're trying to find a place. Uh, most of the rental properties here don't take pets. 
Only apartments for rent uh, are low income or native. There are no affordability for housing. So you look on Zillow today, there are one, two, three, four, six houses for sale. And the lowest uh, housing for is 375 house, $375,000 house, one bedroom, one bath, 900 square feet. Um, the one that's even comparable to a family is a $639,000 house, two bedroom, two bath. And I know I can't afford that. So and you go to the 1.2 million, 1.4 million, a $505,000 house, and $675,000 house that are here in Seward. There's no way I can hire a person making $55,000, $75,000 a year to find a house. And, and I know you guys have an <laughs> extremely hard job to do. And I already went through my five-hour escapade yesterday. <laughs> um, but I, I commend you guys because you have to look far-reaching. And you have to also look at, you know, what's great for Seward is the nature, the beauty. You look out here, you, you can see anything, okay? But you have to look a little further down the road, okay? You have to build infrastructure. You, you have to look at what's best for us in 10 to 15 years, 20 years down the line, okay? And uh, I know you guys, you're, you're looking at you know, everybody's views, and um, but I just want you guys to remember is, uh, you know, I, 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 I implore you guys to look at everybody's um, situation. Thank you. Okay, next on the list is Carol Griswold. Hello again, Carol Griswold, Inside City Limits. This conceptual design is very premature. It is not a plat. There are six main reasons this preliminary plat or conceptual design should be denied. A subdivision plat, even a preliminary conceptual subdivision plat, should show an accurate layout. The plat on page 44 shows lot details with measurements. City Zoning Development Requirement Code um, requires that lots north of the intersection of Phoenix and the Seward Highway require a minimum 60-foot frontage for single-family residences. 15 lots out of 40 have less than the required minimum frontage of 60 feet. This is a major error and is unacceptable. Two, the plat shows the bare minimum street width of 50 feet and no sidewalks. The borough standard of 60 foot wide streets and sidewalks should be required for a dense residential subdivision. Three, on the preliminary plat submittal form on page 10, the applicant, the city, checked not applicable to my plat to item number eight, approximate location of areas subject to inundation, flooding, and the appropriate study which identifies a floodplain. This is clearly incorrect. The consultant noted that the property is partly within a platted, within a mapped special flood hazard AE zone and a mapped floodplain. These areas must be shown and labeled on the plat, or were not. All subdivisions and replats within the flood area zone must have a specific flood hazard note on the plat, which it does not. Four. The geotech testing results of this subsurface conditions are not included. This information is an essential part of the planning and construction process. Drainage issues, soil stability, groundwater conditions, and bearing capacity are all important conditions that should be evaluated prior to moving forward with this high density subdivision. Areas of concern should be noted on the plat. Five. Both willow and fireweed are on the borough's <coughs> list of banned names, as there are already too many, and it can be confusing for the E911 system. Other names should be used. As, they are, as these are new names in this subdivision, the borough addressing officer will not allow them. Six, the development of a subdivision in the Forest Acres campground has been in the works since at least June of 2021. 
yet no outreach or work sessions were held to seek community and neighborhood input. Forest Acres Campground has not been mentioned in any of the resolutions. These are the first public hearings on the replat and rezone of a popular campground, neighborhood park, wildlife habitat with magnificent large spruce trees, and, and a city asset. The Commission should not approve a plat, even a preliminary plat, with illegal lot dimensions, banned street names, substandard street dimensions, and without sidewalks, that is missing critical and required drainage and flood information, and that did not receive adequate community review and input. For these six reasons, and many more, this preliminary replat of Forest Acres Campground and Park should be denied. Thank you. Okay, next is Jonathan Sewell. Good evening. My name is Jonathan Sewell. I live inside the city limits. I've lived at the same address, Forest Acres, for about 45 years. I feel that it, to take a valuable revenue producing resource, public, res, public resource, like Forest Acres Campground, and to destroy it for such dubious private gain is a terrible, terrible idea. During the camping season, the campground is popular with visitors and produces in excess of $40,000. That's the figure that I was given by a couple of department heads, but I heard tonight, 80000 so that's maybe more up to date. Anyway, that number is sure to uh, increase as, as uh, COVID winds down, and it's uh, directly to the tax base. It doesn't count visitor spending here or down. This number is likely to increase as COVID continues to wind down. But it's not just visitors who use and love Forest Acres Campground. It's used and loved by local folks, too. As a matter of fact, my family lived there in a tent for 10 days when we first moved to Seward in 1976. It was during the Derby monsoon season. It was pouring rain. It wasn't really comfortable, but it was good that we had that option or we that, that campground is an option. And it was an important option for us then. We had two small children, a cat and a bird, but it was good to have that option. This land is subject to flooding, even with, probably more so, with the filling in of the uh, Gillespie lots to the north. This will only get worse. All of those large trees are removed, probably much worse. This flood potential forced the Mountain Haven nursing facility to abandon their plans to build in the area, if you recall. The campground, as it stands, is, I think, the highest and best use of this land. Uh, I know that we have housing issues in this town. This is nationwide and even worldwide. I get Canadian papers, too. Housing is a big issue there. It ebbs and flows, subject to the... the the, the pressures and demands of the capitalists that, we, that we're living in. So I am asking you to please consider the highest and best use of the land and defeat Resolution 009 now. I think there are better options in the area. Thank you. Okay. And we have one more. I was wondering when would be a good time to pause to uh, fix the streaming device here. Okay. Either pause, take it. Okay. I'm getting multiple messages yeah. about that. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go on a quick recess then yep. and see if we can. Can you bring out the list too for signing up? How long do you expect it'll take to reset that? Okay, mics are going off. Take a five minute, that'd be sufficient. Okay. 
That's a prime spot for sure. I think I agree with both of you. My my biggest concern is that you know when they're saying oh it's going to be affordable, but then when they're saying oh no it's actually going to be x well, you know this amount of money and who can actually afford it thirty percent of your income. That'd be my only concern is that are they really going to be affordable? But I agree we need housing. We need you know. So my outlook, um, coming from where I come from in, in Indiana, we have counties that are usually within a city. There's usually cities within the counties. And I lived in Columbus, Indiana, which is in Bartholomew County. And in Bartholomew County, there were subdivisions all over the outskirts of Columbus, but weren't inside of the city. So as we have our city codes here and what restricts what can be done or what is done in the city, likely we have like harbor view bear lake lost lake and we have all these subdivisions outside of the city of sewer because sewer is small and we're, we're jam-packing as many houses as we can in here but how hard is it for these teachers for these people to get housing in these open lots there are a couple more in harbor view they are a little more pricier than the normal i'm not real sure that getting rid of a bunch of trees and trying to make something a little more affordable which i still don't see how they're going to be much less than fifty thousand dollars a lot even being a teeny tiny lot um, why can we not go out of our our area where our school serves all the way to moose pass we have buses that go to moose pass moose pass is 20 miles down the road 30 miles down the road probably but 30 minutes um, why can we not look as far as housing expanded out rather than trying to jam pack it all within the city limits? Or there's talk of a shelf or something on the other side of the, the bay I'm not real familiar with yet. I'm like, there's a shelf? I'm like, what's a shelf? I mean, I know what a shelf is, but I'm saying, where's the shelf? I haven't heard nobody talk about the shelf over here, but I heard that last time, so there's a shelf over here. Why are we going to cut down all the little trees and our little green space over here, which I personally, over the past seven years coming down here I've always loved that spot um, camped there several times so this is one of the spots I would hate to see go but I'm only one of the, the many voices okay, thank you I too am a little concerned about the cost of it um, I understand that as at a preliminary replat I think it would wind up being um, you know they can drill down a little bit further and you know make it a little bit more palatable for a lot of folks I totally uh, sympathize with people that are trying to come into town and get a home because most everybody who is objecting to it already has theirs and we, we, we have an obligation to the community to everybody in the community as well to figure out what's the best thing is the forest acres the best place to, to be at this point in time I'm not I don't know I don't think so I just find it unfortunate that we have a lot of land that's owned privately but no but now because nobody's doing anything with it the city's caught holding, you know, basically the, the ball's been tossed to them to figure it out because they blame the city for not having housing and so they're doing the best that they can, you know, with what they have. I mean, granted, you know, I'm sure the, the replat and a variety of other things will, you know, will wind up, uh, you know, addressing some of that as well as some of the, you know, the zoning. But, uh, yes, I am a little bit concerned about overall with the, uh, um, you know, are we pushing this too fast or too quickly? Because if you push it there and then you wind up, you find up, wind up finding out that the homes are going to cost three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand, or whatever it winds up being. I'm not a builder, but knowing what the income levels of a lot of people who are coming here, they may not even be able to afford it. And maybe that needs to be a whole other discussion to figure out if it really does work. So that's all I have. Um, does anybody have anything else? No. So, I'm not sure. There was, there's also, I noticed property on the other side of, I think it's Sea Line, is that in the road? On the other side of Sea Line, there was property that looked to be maybe a campground before. I I just, before this meeting, found that I think that may have got sold already. And something might be in the, in the works for that. But it looks very vacant, and it's 11 acres on, on the GIS. It shows like it's 11 acres. And if we're needing 11 acres to make a subdivision, and that property looks less than desirable for 
anything else, but it would look great for no trees has to be cut down. Yeah, part uh, of that's already been been sold to uh, or working on that for the Shugash meter going in. There's I think only about seven acres of some sort left. I'm not sure if there's things in the in the in the mode for that yet. I don't know. So, so how many houses can we fit on seven acres? I don't know. Or tiny homes. <laughs> tiny homes, yeah. I have five acres back, or I still have five acres back in Indiana, and I could fit at least, I would put six lots on it. Yeah. Not 40. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that. Okay. Uh, does anybody, any of the commissioners, have anything else at this point? Okay, if there's all is done, um, Mr. Clerk, can we call for a vote? Um, did you want to ask the applicant if he had anything to speak? He's oh, I'm on sorry. the phone here. Uh, oh, Dave, I'm sorry, I didn't know. know. Okay, absolutely. Uh, uh, Dave, can you hear us? Yeah, hi, this is uh, Dave Hale with RDM. I've been listening to all of this. Appreciate all the, all the comments. Uh, I guess the only thing that I'll um, say uh, besides taking questions is the the size of the lot is is uh, it's based on the road construction costs and utility costs. You know, to get if there is uh, city sewered water that you can bring into the subdivision. It, it costs money to, to build the road to bring all those utilities to each of the houses, and you got to distribute it to all the owners, right? So you got to pay for all the utilities of the road. Uh, look at the market value of the of the lot. And we try to balance all that stuff. And, and this keeps the cost of the lots down so that more people can actually afford to live here. It sounds like you guys need housing. So I think the goal was to not have super expensive lots. If you only had 10 lots and you needed to build the roads and utilities, they'd be pretty expensive lots. So that's, that's why they're a little bit smaller. They were designed for you know, 2,000, 2,500 square foot houses, they actually fit in there with a garage, a two-story two garage. The setbacks are, are 20 foot in the front, uh, 10 on the rear, and five or 10 on the side. They, they want 10 foot spread between the, uh, the houses on, on the side. And so it's all designed to fit those houses with a garage. And granted, you know, they're not uh, great big lots, they're not acre lots, uh, but you know, that wasn't the purpose of it. The purpose was to, to have some, some housing that people could afford uh, to live in sewers. So I just wanted to give a little bit of background on that, and I could certainly answer any questions that maybe you have. Do any of the commissioners have anything for the petitioner? I think they're still too close, but I, like I said, I'm, I'm ignorant to our some of our regulations here are in code, so I'm looking at that clock to the corner of the wall is 10 feet, and that's pretty close. So if one house goes on fire, they all go on fire. Yes. Um, I, I don't know. My house is closer than 10 feet to the neighbor. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This code here is a lot different. Yeah. So I, I'm still learning on that one. Okay. So the, the houses won't be uh, any closer on the sidelines than 15 feet, which is code. Okay. Commissioners, do you have anything else? No. No? Okay, well then uh, I will call for the vote. <clears throat> so we're voting on the approval of resolution 2022-09. Yes. Fairhay. No. Monaco. Yes. Staggs. No. Uh, Chair Sullivan. No. Okay, that resolution has failed. Okay. We'll move on to the next one. The next public hearing item is resolution 2022-10. Mr. Clerk, would you please read the title into the record? Resolution 2022-010. A resolution of the Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Seward, Alaska, recommending City Council approval of the land use amendment to rezone lots 1 through 40, Hemlock Subdivision from Institutional INS Zoning District to Single Family Residential R1 Zoning District. 
Okay, I will need a motion and a second as we entertain this. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022-010. I'll go ahead and second it. Okay. Administration, do you have any comments? Yeah, this uh, resolution is obviously based on the um, past the previous resolution, but it would be rezoning once uh, this replat is, if it is reviewed again and, and approved, it would rezone these lots on the north end of the replat from institutional to single family, which is the most restrictive residential zoning district that we have to help promote the type of residential growth the community needs, which is single family homes. Okay. <clears throat> I'll open this to public hearing. Is anybody signed in for this? It may be a little abbreviated at this point. Uh, there are two people. The uh, first one is Carol Griswold. Carol Griswold, Inside City Limits. The rezone of Forest Acres Campground should be denied for the following five reasons. One, the 2030 Comprehensive Plan was prepared with extensive public engagement and provides a community vision of future land use, including zoning. The only binding element of the Comprehensive Plan, the future land use map, supports retaining the Forest Acres Campground and Bike Park as institutional. This critical fact was not even mentioned in the packet. Volume 1 of the plan, 2.2.10, we value orderly growth and balanced development that is driven by community consensus in conformance with the land use plan. 2.2.8, we value an open response of city government based on a high level of citizen input and community involvement. Not only was, is this development not supported by the future land use map, it is not driven by community consensus. Since the beginning of this project in June of 2021, the community has been excluded from this process. No work sessions, no outreach. This is the first public hearing. The city did not even mention Forest Acres Campground and Park in its task orders or resolutions. Very few people realized where the Hemlock subdivision was. Number two, the policy cited for comprehensive <coughs> plan and strategic plan consistency do not apply to the popular Forest Acres Campground and Park. This is not vacant land to be infilled. Clear cutting the large trees and developing Forest Acres Campground into a high density residential subdivision in a floodplain and special flood hazard zone with substandard road widths, no sidewalks, and minimum lot sizes without a traffic analysis or plan is not in accordance with community values. 2.2.1, we value the small town feel and friendly atmosphere. 2.2.2, we value clean air, clean water, and a healthy natural environment for people and wildlife. We value quiet in our neighborhoods. We practice environmental leadership and act as environmental stewards. Consider how to best design construction that can be maintained over time without damaging the environment, balancing near-term interests with the protection of future generations. Plan for careful use of natural resources in order to prevent depletion and do no harm to the environment. Protect our ecosystem. Those are all quotes. Number three, sacrificing public land, the campground, wildlife habitat, neighborhood park, and a city asset for a high-density housing development in a residential neighborhood is not necessary. It is not the city's job to develop city land for housing or to compete with private landowners. There are 189 acres of vacant land on private property listed online for sale inside city limits right now. Number four, staff comments on page 28 included seven departments, but omitted the Parks and Recreation Director. Why? What will be the impact to campers in our town of eliminating a popular long-standing 47-unit campground, noted for its large trees, family-friendly environment, 
away from the bustle and wind of the waterfront campground. We'll displace campers park in our residential streets and parking lots. Seward needs this campground. Number five, the applicant statement the rezone will be a benefit to the city of Seward and the community at large is unsupported. There are no guarantees that local residents will buy these houses. Why are we building homes on city property for second homes for out-of-town owners? Where is the traffic study to analyze the impact of traffic to and from the Seward Highway intersections and on the Forest Acres neighborhood? Where is the geotech data to understand the floodplain and the special flood hazard zone impacts on the property and adjacent land? What are the other impacts to the Forest Acres neighborhood and our quality of life? This rezone is not supported by the binding comprehensive plan future land use map or the comprehensive plan policies. The community has not had adequate time or opportunity for public input. The application and plat has many errors and omissions. <coughs> Please vote to deny this rezone. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list is Rhonda Hubbard. Um, I'll, I spoke to the issue earlier. Thank you. And that is all. Anybody else? Then? Anybody in the audience? Um, again, Dave Paperman, uh, resident of the city limits. Um, first of all, I appreciate your, uh, your vote on the last topic. I believe that uh, if we plan on using Forest Acres Campground in the future, um, that we would need to deny this rezone as R1 does not allow camping. Um, so uh, that's my statement there. Um, I, I can't believe, I mean, here's a bad metaphor. I don't know, my, my English teacher's not going to be happy. Um, I missed the forest for the trees here. Um, we do have seven acres that Commissioner Staggs pointed out in the, arm, uh, the old Air Force Rec Camp property um, that uh, is coincidentally going to be next to, they're not calling it a hospital, but essentially it is a hospital. I mean, with the, with the number of people and the number of patients and services that are going to be going on there, there's going to be a lot more positions over there. They're going to need housing. And how dang great would it be to have some sort of a planned use development that was designed all at once on a vacant lot where no uh, lot preparation really needs to be done, um, right in an area that uh, is really kind of an eyesore right now. Um, so I gotta say, I think you really hit the nail on the head right there. We've got some perfect property for this uh, project. Um, I also just wanted to say, um, when we look at, I remember, I've been here since uh, about 2000. My first time I came to Seward was about 1991. And I remember how great I like how I saw this town. I, uh, it was just so neat and so beautiful. And the first time when I drove into town um, as a resident here, I remember, you know, you cross over the bridges. There was that beautiful series of um, basically Alder Willow that was over by the railroad on the east side of the road. That's all gone. Um, we had uh, a little bit more trees in the Gillespie property that was back there, uh, right at the entrance to town. Um, that's been leveled, uh, gravel, no trees for years. Um, we're, I can't believe, I grew up in New Jersey, and I can't believe that uh, the, the topic of even considering the construction of a noise barrier on the Seward Highway in Seward, Alaska was even a, a, a dream, because that is just absolutely absurd. Um, we have a noise barrier. <laughs> They're called spruce trees and some cottonwood trees. Um, we all we all need some housing. Uh, I want to help. I I, I want to help the housing problem. Uh, I think you. I know you all want to help the housing problem. There are solutions out there. Uh, the bench idea sounds very attractive. There's about a hundred acres of borough property uh, out Exit Glacier Road in that Wilma Road area. Um, that doesn't necessarily flood, um, that is developable, already has some services. Uh, like I said, we have the old Air Force Rec Camp property. There's lots of, lots of, 
property around here. Um, let's not cut off our nose to spite our face uh, and think about this as a planning process. So I appreciate your help. I really appreciate you guys, uh, the planning department. <laughs> I mean, you are the, there's two of you, right? There's nobody else. Uh, and you, you do the job in most communities that are a little, only a little bit larger than, than us is going to have a much bigger department. So um, I appreciate your help, and I hope that this can start us on a path to a community discussion about how that we in Seward, meaning the Seward area, including outside the city limits, can s remedy this problem and get our economy uh, moving the way we want it to be. So. Thanks again. Have a good night. Okay. Anybody else? He said everything so beautifully that I hate to say anything else except <laughs> I have relatives in Ashland, Oregon, and not only did a fire go through part of Ashland, it went on to Phoenix and Talon. Three cities were all demolished, and those people were so lucky that thousands of people didn't get stopped because there's a freeway going through that they could exit and they got those people out and in Seward we have one road that allows anybody in Forest Acres to actually make an exit if there's a fire going through and the evacuation plan has to be in place not the cart before the horse we have to know where we're going if there's a tsunami. Where are people going to go park if they don't have a car? Where are they going to exit in case of an emergency? And those houses were one right next to another, and the fire took all of them. And California had the same thing, and our climate isn't getting any better. So I'm sorry I come off as a mean <laughs> person. I'm not. I'm passionate. The trees, I walk under them all the time, and it gives me peace. I told my husband, that's why I'm not crazy, and he said, well, <laughs> okay, I'm not crazy, but I do love my trees and the wildlife, and there's very few times that I don't go in there that whether there's an eagle sitting in the cottonwood or there's robin singing or calling for mates in the spring, or there's ermine that are dancing across from one stump to another and squirrels always chattering and saying, this is my neighborhood, you need to get out of here. So please walk the property before you really do vote. Because, I mean, I know you've said no, but to any houses in there, that's a special property and it's also a barrier because how are all those other people in Forest Acres up to Mountain Haven going to exit from there? if there's a fire when you have all the people down in the lower land and everybody's trying to get out mm -hmm. onto one sewer highway. Please just consider the future and thank you again for listening. <laughs> Do we have anybody else? No one else. Okay, the applicant. Uh, Dave, <clears throat> Dave, are you still on the phone? Do you have anything to do? Uh, I guess I don't have a lot of comment on the on the uh, rezone part of things because they kind of go hand in hand with the, mm -hmm. the reclass. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, I'll close the public hearing, and do we have any comments from the commissioner? Yeah, I'd like to make a comment and then also ask administration. We are going to run into an issue with trying to rezone this with the camping. Do we need to table this because we weren't able to deal with the... Uh, no, yeah, I mean, no, it, it should just probably be voted down or pulled by one of the two at this point. So let's just pull it. Yeah. So can I make a motion to uh, table this or pull it? I would think it'd be appreciate to pull it primarily yeah, because we'll there's yeah, a... Yeah, because yeah. It, it doesn't make sense. Because it's, yeah. it's contingent yeah. upon the approval yeah. of the other one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, do we need to make a motion? Um, is it... So is it... Is there a difference between Withdrawing. doing it or just voting no? Or however you would want to do it. Just, you know, like, I vote it down. Yeah. Uh, you can just vote it down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just make it okay. easier. Just vote on it then? Yeah. Okay. I will go ahead and call for the vote then. Okay. Voting on the approval of resolution 2022-010.
Stags. No. Monaco. No. Bear Hay. No. Charbonneau. No. Sullivan. No. Okay, that resolution has failed. <coughs> okay. All right, for the next one we're going to the next public hearing is resolution 22, uh, 2022-0011. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you please read the title into the record? Okay, resolution 2022-011. A resolution of the Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Seward, Alaska, granting a conditional use permit to Uncle Fravis LLC to operate the activities of a social club on lots 10 through 13, block 23, original town site of Seward, located at 417 Fifth Avenue within an office residential OR zoning district. Okay, I would need a motion and a second, please. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022-011. I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Administration, do you have any comments, please? Yes, sir. Uh, this property in, I believe it was 2017, got a conditional use permit to operate an arts school. However, the current use of this building is to provide space for nonprofit clubs, organizational meetings, and ongoing public benefit programming, which doesn't fit that previous CUP. So the applicant is doing their due diligence to get an appropriate CUP that fits their their use in the building, although they have been doing these uses for some time now. Um, so what they've been doing is not going to change. It's just that they're applying to get a conditional use permit to fit that use now, which um, a social club fits what they're, what they're doing, which is providing space for the nonprofit clubs, organizational meetings, and concerts, and public benefit programming. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll open it to public hearing. Is anybody signed in for this? Just one, Carol Griswold. <coughs> Did you call my name? Yes. Okay, sure. <coughs> Hello again. Hi. Carol Griswold, <laughs> Inside City Limits. <laughs> Dear Commissioners, I own a residential property near Temple Studios. I would appreciate the addition of a definition of the unlisted use of social club and the activities associated with this use. The resolution states the current and proposed use is primarily renting space to nonprofits to host social events. The findings on page 52E mention use of alcohol. I'm opposed to this site becoming a bar. If Uncle Fravis wants to sell alcohol in the future, the CUP should come back to the Commission as a changed condition. The application notes that the intended improvements include a commercial kitchen and food pantry. Is a food pantry just storage of food, or is it a food bank? These uses should be addressed and included in the definition of a social club. I'm concerned about cooking smells pervading the neighborhood, as is the case with other restaurants. A condition should be added that the commercial kitchen will have adequate exhaust filters to prevent odor release. I'm concerned about the parking plan for this building with a, cap a capacity of 100 people. The CUP should require additional conditions. One, there should be a condition that all parking must be off street to avoid parking in the street and negatively impacting the residential neighborhood. Two. The on-site parking plan must show how many parking spaces can be provided on-site with a clear parking plan according to code parking regulations. The providing parking, pl parking plan on page 63 is very sketchy and incomprehensible. There should be a condition that requires inclusion of updated letters of agreement to co-share parking with a nearby church and dentist's office. These locations should also include an improved parking plan with the number of spaces potentially available at each site and the times of availability. There should be a condition that the city and state business license must be current and must reflect the actual line of business. The current state business license for Uncle Fravis for this address is for real estate rental and leasing. Leasing spaces for nonprofits to host social events 
is not the same as leasing and renting real estate. The NAICS Code 813410 Civic and Social Organizations, which include social clubs, would be a more appropriate line of business. Thank you for your consideration. We have anybody else signed in? No, nope, that was all. It's, um, do we have anybody who would like to speak? Yeah, since I'm here, uh, Dave Paper and I live in the same house. Um, and, and actually, I was going to uh, point out, I, I'm intimately familiar with this building because uh, I was the uh, exalted ruler, the president of the Elks Lodge when uh, we purchased this building uh, and renovated it. Uh, it's a little while ago now. Um, and, uh, and I will say, when I saw this come across my desk at work, um, because uh, I, well, I, I need to talk to you guys about how the who is notified through the state of Alaska because the, the state has weird ownership of, of those properties so for through Avtech. Um, I thought that they were uh, starting this process at a social club uh, in order to start the process of a bar. Um, and uh, because that is one of the potential uses that you could put a social club for uh, because you can get a club license for the bar. Um, and I talked with uh, one of the folks that run uh, the organization and they're not planning on doing that. Um, uh, my employer has, has no opinion on, on the thing, uh, on the proposal at all, the CUP at all. Um, but I just want to say that this building has been used for essentially the purpose they were talking to, talking about, uh, including a bar, uh, with almost no impact to the neighborhood uh, for several years. And I've been fortunate enough to get to a bunch of different activities in this building. And it is pretty darn cool. They've really uh, uh, made a, a disaster into kind of a gem, and I give them kudos uh, for for doing that to the community. Um, and uh, and good job. So I'd encourage you to pass this. Does anybody else have anything to to offer? No. Um, actually, is the applicant present? So the applicant was here earlier, but had to leave for a concert. Oh, okay. Did he provide any words of wisdom? No, but he, <laughs> didn't, he did express that he was sorry that he could not be here to speak okay. to his application. All right, if there's nothing else, uh, I will go ahead and uh, close the, uh, the public hearing. And uh, do we have any comments from the commission now? Yeah, I, I think that um, Temple Studios does good things for the community, and I like what they've been doing. I would like to see a better parking plan. I like parking plans. Um, so I'd like to see a better one and I'm concerned about parking on the street. But overall the businesses in the area seem, you know, to support it mm -hmm. and I don't see anything particularly wrong with it. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I kinda agree with Carol just the like what does a social club mean? You know, like even in our land use table I couldn't find a true definition or even loose, I guess, you know, or is and I know how it has been used, so I mean assuming it's the same and for groups to use but yeah i guess if there's any intention for it to become more of a membership type place or i kind of question but um since he's not here and i thought the drawings were a little bit wonky i guess <laughs> maybe unnecessary i don't know <laughs> <laughs> this one particular says it's a structural design for a 60 north so i don't know what's going on there <sighs> mm -hmm. but Anybody else? Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Commissioner Monaco, Commissioner Staggs, anything to? Uh, I like the idea of there being more things for people to do here. Maybe not something I'll be doing, but it looks like it's something more for the community to gather into and do things. Mm -hmm. So I like that idea, but I'm kind of wanting to what's really being proposed, and especially since he wasn't able to, to stay and give us presentation okay. okay well I'm somewhat familiar with uh, social clubs and uh, <laughs> some of the <laughs> some of them <laughs> that are there and I, I know they're right across the street from the American Legion and the rest were catty corner from the American Legion and they have if this is just an alignment to what they've been doing it has been hardly an impact to the area at all and I know that uh, even if even if it did say that there was going to provide, could potentially provide liquor in it, they'd have to have, you know, very, very specific um, permissions, i.e., I mean, if they get a liquor license, but that's sort of a very tough and very expensive 
potentially expensive kind of thing for that, and you, usually it's associated with membership driven. So I think this is more of a community forum, Temple, Su Temple Studios community center. So I think, uh, you know, I have really no problem, no issues of what they're doing, and I would support moving the thing forward. Anybody else? Okay, Mr. Clerk, could we have a vote? <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Voting on the approval of resolution 2022-011. <coughs> Charbonneau. Yes. Bags. Yes. Monaco. Yes. Fairhay. Yes. Chair Sullivan. Yes. That resolution is approved. Okay, great. Okay, now we're on to new business, and we have just one resolution. 2022-0112. Uh, uh, Mr. Clerk, could you read that into the record? Resolution 2022-012, a resolution of the Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Seward, Alaska, recommending City Council amend Seward City Code 15.10.222, Development Requirements, Table Notes, Letter E. Okay. Could I have, uh, have a motion and a second, please? I'll make a motion to approve resolution uh, 2022-012. I'll second the motion. Okay. Administration, do you have anything? This uh, resolution is being brought forward due to various applications that we've received to provide more housing, the downtown area and all commercial areas but are unable to provide single fam well, multiple bedroom apartments in these, in these districts due to the restriction of an additional 1,200 square feet per unit of five or more units. Letter G in the table notes does allow a multiple family studio apartment to be built um, at, with a minimum of 9,000 square foot, but Builders are wanting to build apartments that are bigger than studio apartments mm -hmm. to fit families. So the proposed change to code in letter E would strike the last sentence that all said districts of R3, UR, OR, AC, and CB districts would be required an additional 1,200 square feet per unit of five or more units. They would still be required to have the minimum of 9,000 square feet, however, to build uh, an apartment or a apartment with three or more units. Okay. Is there anybody he here available for discussion? Commissioners, do we have? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to amend this. Um, I have an issue with wording in E. I would like to, let's see, I would like to change it so that we keep the provision of 1,200 square feet per any additional unit for R3, UR, and OR, but allow the change for AC and CB. Feel that downtown in AC, where you're kind of squeezed in between other buildings, if you if you apply with you uh, building the correct parking that we put forward in the um, in the code then a building should be able to house a little more people in that, that area. But in an area like R3 or UR or OR where there's potentially more room, I'd hate to see people crammed into an area so that the developer can just get an extra profit on it. People need more space, especially where areas would have space. Um, if you're going to build downtown and buy downtown, you kind of like expect to be you know, in a small area. So I want to make sure we, we give people know a lot more space in areas where they potentially need space. Absolutely. Commissioners? I like that idea. I definitely worry about losing the parking, you know, I'm not trying to be tropolizing. Well, they, they still would need to comply with parking regulations. Yeah. So, so much mm -hmm. space. Yeah. I mean, if, if they, in AC and CB, if they were planning something, they would still need to provide, depending on where and what, they would still need to provide parking based on the code that we set forth. So that would limit yeah. some part right there. I just don't want to see too much cramming into an area that potentially does. I mean, I can think of some areas that right now have plexes that shouldn't be that big, but technically they're allowed. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't think people have to be forced into that. Mm -hmm. and any other comments, commissioners? I've got nothing. No? I have nothing yet. You good? Do I need a second? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to make a motion. I need a second for that. Oh, you do? I'll okay. second that motion. Okay. okay. For discussion, anyway. <laughs> we just were going on such a good roll there. I just don't want to break you up. No, <laughs> but uh, so the uh, proposed amendment to this resolution, um, the commissioner Charbonneau has said, is that it would now read that R three U R O R districts require an additional 1,200 square feet per unit of five or more units. So it would leave out that requirement for AC and CB. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any concerns, comments, or otherwise? No? I guess I'll go ahead and call for the vote. So we'll be voting on the amendment to the resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, Verhe. Yes. Monaco. Yes. Staggs. Yes. Charbonneau. Yes. Chair Sullivan. Yes. Okay, so now the amended resolution is back on the floor. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any further comments about the amended resolution? I've said everything I need. <laughs> anybody else? Anybody in the audience? Any input? No? Okay, let's call for the vote on the amended resolution. Can I get a first? Or, or I think we have to start over with the first and the second. I don't think so. Didn't we already do the first and the second? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so calling for a vote for the amended resolution. Uh, Bearhead? Yes. Hornset? Or not here. Monaco? Yes. Staggs? Yes. Charbonneau? Yes. And Chair Sullivan? Yes. The amended resolution is approved. Okay, good. All right. Okay, we're on to any unfinished business, and I don't think we have any that I'm aware of. So on to new business. Um, oh, no, I think we, let's see, this is, I've got that. Where am I at? Oh, on the wrong page. Okay, our other new business. <laughs> we're here. Our last time I had business tonight is, this, um, let me see, to discuss, let me double check my notes here. Okay, discuss the topics for May 17th work session. And uh, from uh, the, this most recent work session, we're going to be bringing more kind of information and research back to you in regards to uh, short-term rentals. Good. Okay. Okay, for informational items and reports, uh, the next thing we have on the agenda is for informational items. It's just a reminder that everybody that we have a work session on the 17th at 6 p.m., and our next regular meeting is on June 7th at 7 p.m. And does anybody in the audience have any questions, uh, any comments? Can we close this out? I, I just want to say one thing. Because um, I've always got some vote. No, I, I do think that um, the one entity that really needs to play a, a role in the housing challenge that we have uh, is the borough. And, and I think we need to really, uh, the PNZ Commission, the Planning Department, the City Council, uh, and residents really need to start getting uh, in touch with our borough leadership uh, to talk to them about releasing some other properties. There are tons of buildable properties uh, in the borough, and uh, we can do that. And I'd be happy to, to serve in some way uh, to see about maybe putting some sort of planned use subdivision uh, in, in that Air Force Rec camp. I, I do think that's a great idea. Thanks. Okay. Okay, I think next we have some board and, uh, board and administration comments. Oh, I'm sorry. We have Ms. Hubbard. Yes, Bob Hubbard, <laughs> 1800 Jesse Lee Drive. Um, I just wanted to make comments. First, I want to commend the, the, the planning staff and, and you all for putting up with everybody <laughs> it's, so it's a tough job but and there's there's some real challenges in this community um, for some reason my mom she's lived here she's going on 90 and she said I, I don't I don't know who'd want to live in this miserable place <laughs> but it's turned out to be a beautiful place and um, and there's a 
the VRBOs of the world are definitely after people, and they're way ahead of us, and they are um, doing a really good job helping people, you know, do nightly rentals, and it's causing some housing issues, as we all know. And with that, I just wanted to encourage you all to stay fast to your software program, I think, that you have that was invested to, um, you know, track the people that may be violating their R1 um, residential uh, zone rules there, so um, would be that that may be helpful to get those back on the market to be just or say um, as single family um, residents and not be nightly rentals and um, and also the, the borough yes that there's a lot of. Um, messes on our borough lands and I, I don't know how to crack that nut but I've talked to our borough reps and um, I know it's hard to tell people what to do with their private property but you know maybe we could the more stuff they have on their property the and junk we tax them more I, I don't know but something to encourage them to clean up their properties and and just make it more attractive and um, not so uh, not such an eyesore. We have um, some areas that really need to be cleaned up. And again, um, sticking fast to, to our codes and covenants even in our own um, in, um, inside city limits. And then lastly, um, I know the comprehensive plan has been referenced a lot lately. And the, the last one that was, um, that we had, and I don't know how much the community really participated in, but I, I heard it wasn't really, um, put out there well and you know maybe we need to um, I don't know when the last time we did something like that but um, you know and I know it's it's on the books but uh, you know maybe we need to bring the community back together and and, and uh, just have a community work session <laughs> on that and have it done where you know more people are are involved and not feeling like they're they're not included so okay thank you that's all I have thank you Okay, now we have move on to board and administration comments and any responses. Uh, yeah, I did want to um, just mention a couple of things. And we, like I said earlier, uh, we are planning on meeting with uh, Borough, uh, Mark, Marcus Mueller and a staff member next week. Uh, one of the things that, that people brought up and that we were talking with uh, 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 Cindy Eklund uh, with, with Marcus Mueller a few weeks ago, and most, un every unincorporated area, uh, in the borough does have an advisory board that, that they deal with lands and that kind of thing like Moose Pass has one and uh, Cooper Landing has one and Seward's kind of a unique place because we have in-city limits and we have out-of-city limits but because our out-of-city limits is so big I do think it would be good if we had an advisory board that worked for out-of-city limits um, to be able to have those conversations and, and I think in talking with uh, Mr. Mueller he said that that like something he said the conversation we had does not happen very often or has not happened in a long time and it would be very valuable to him to have an advisory board that helps people drive initiatives and find land and so um, and, and I know the city wants to uh, coordinate that as well because like I said before like we know that part of our this is a holistic this is not just an inside city limits and out of city limits thing that we're dealing with and we need to make the best use of both inside and out of uh, city limits uh, properties and so um, if you guys do your part and get in contact with the borough and I think you know we'll do our part but it would be good if we could I think have an advisory commission board whatever however they do that to be able to work with out of city limits and to be able to make the most use of those properties as well um, so I appreciate everyone's comments I uh, appreciate the commissioners you guys the work that you do um, there aren't um, we're in this together and there <laughs> and it's hard and uh, but I appreciate everyone's like investment because this is this is an investment, and so I appreciate that. Uh, and I did want to comment on the Fort Raymond property, those seven acres. It has a massive power line easement that is really huge, and it backs up to the power plant and the generators. And so, um, and it it is I would say it is not a good use for single family residential. Um, and so there are some places in there that I know people are interested in those plots of land, but that with that, I mean, it's if you go look, and it is a massive power line because it does come from the generation plant, and it is, it's got a pretty big, they're creating a bit, pretty large right-of-way for the easement for those power lines, 
And so there's actually not a lot of usable land in that seven acres, and it's definitely not good for, I would not want to have my family living under there. Um, it might be good for like some other types of housing, but I just, I, you know, so I think we need to work towards whatever that is best use for that land for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But I did want to make a comment on just that piece. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. Courtney? Yeah, I just want to thank all the commissioners for your time and effort in reviewing the packet before the meeting and being prepared with thoughts and input because it's a lot of information and we really value your mm -hmm. feedback as well. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mr. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank the administration like always, but the public, it's fantastic to see you out here. No matter what your opinion is, I love hearing it, we love hearing it, and it's super important. I get tired of passing resolutions with nobody sitting there. <laughs> so please keep coming out, no matter what you have to say, it's all worthwhile. Great, thank you. Great, I was going to say, yeah, so many faces and so many emails flying today, read every one, and it's awesome. And we have a vacant seat, so a little more <laughs> reminder there, you get, you get more involved, it's super fun. Yeah, I'm, I have nothing. Nothing? Okay. No, I'm still learning. So. <laughs> thank, you guys, thank you guys all for, uh, for coming and being a part of it, um, definitely helps. Um, my phone goes off like nuts today, <laughs> ring, 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 it's like, man, um, Thankfully, I had a position today where I was sitting in the truck waiting on somebody to load me, so I got an opportunity to read half a message every time. Um, <laughs> and thank you, Jason, for that. That is a great um, concern. Shark, the arc flash with the transformer would be very great. So um, I did some arc flash training in my previous job, and I know that's a very big danger. And it sounds like we have um, power issues occasionally where things blow up. So <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the too close to that either. <laughs> that, that one sounds like that would be a big one if that one goes. Yeah. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Jason, Courtney, I really do appreciate all that you, you've done because you've gone through a lot of that stuff and probably some of this didn't turn out necessarily the same, which you maybe have predicted. But I think the, the value of all of that is the community input. And it's not a dead issue, obviously. We're going to just you know continue to move on, press on, and see what we can do to find out the best way of, of trying to resolve that. I'm still a little, you know, uh, when you talk about, you know, the comments from folks and things like that from who came up, there are a lot of people out there um, that, you know, they have land, but they haven't been made available. So, you know, your effort here is, you know, is stellar because you're trying to fix something that with your hands tied in some respects. And um, it would be nice if pe some people who own property or even out of the borough and areas to step up and to be able to do something to help solve this, this problem that we have. Um, it would be nice, you know, they say it's not a lodging problem, it's a, or it's not a housing problem, it's a lodging problem. That's a whole different work thing, but as far as getting places to, for how homes to be built, I know our local developers, I don't think they could do a full subdivision anyway, and so we'd have to court somebody if we had a big piece of land from either Anchorage or Wasilla or something along those lines. And, you know, that maybe will give us the opportunity to find the ideal place, whether it's, you know, winds up being Forest Acres eventually at some point if we, you know, relook at certain things or other areas. But I think it's, uh, you know, again, it's not a dead issue, but I think we need to make sure we, you know, continue to press on. You guys are, have done stellar work on this. So thank you. And does anybody else have anything? I don't know if this is how this works. Hi, I'm Mary Beth. I live in the city limits. But talking about um, properties, like when there's just vacant houses that you don't see people living in, I mean, does that get addressed? Through, I mean, when I walk through town, I know there's homes that are just, maybe they're tear down homes, but is that something that gets addressed can I, can as well? I comment on that, Madam Yes, Chair? absolutely. Yes. So one of the, we realize that there's lots of problems that are contributing to this. So one, one of the things that we are doing is we're doing, um, in our spare time, uh, we're, <laughs> we're doing this, uh, a, an empty lot inventory um, because we do have a lot of empty lots in this town. And we also are looking like uh, kind of a, an empty um, house inventory. And we can, um, the utility department, we're kind of working together to find out um, utilities that have not been turned on in a couple of years or or those kinds of things but I really think it's important to look at that the concept is called infill I guess and to look at that as another piece of the problem and why are people sitting on properties and um, how can we get them to 
move those in to, so that they're usable and helping contribute to um, the, the problem. So just, you know, like we are definitely aware of like when you drive through and you start looking for empty lots, there's a lot. And how do we get those people to get those on? And I know like there's, there's, I, I think that does tie in with some other discussions of, um, with like short-term rentals and those types of things where you have like vacant, I know in some places have like vacant land tax. Um, so if you're not using your land, you actually like that they, they're taxed at a pretty high value. Because right now we tax highly the, the, the property with the building on it. Mm -hmm. And so doing this kind of like an upside down piece a little bit where you increase the tax on the land itself for vacant land. And that helps motivate things. So anyway, there's, there's different concepts that other communities have done to try and push those things on so it makes usable buildings. Um, but yeah, we are definitely aware of that and looking into that. It's, there's just a lot to try and research in a lot of different ways. And we're, we're, but it is aware of it and it is something that I believe is, uh, will contribute to the solution. Thank you, Jason, for, for doing that. It's uh, sort of out, of out of sync with the normal protocol, but, you know. So, it's your meeting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. It's I'm the queen. No. But, uh, so, you know, yeah. so I'll go ahead. And, but if there's nothing else, I will call this uh, meeting adjourned right. at 9.05. There we go. Okay.